Hi there, my name is Lars Sørensen, and we're here at the Sci Conference, the Intelligence System Edition in London. And we're talking to participants, to uh, paper writers, and also to our keynote uh, speakers about the topics, uh, referring to the entire keynotes that will be available on our YouTube channel very soon. If you just subscribe to our channel, you'll get a notification as soon as the, uh, the entire keynotes are online. We're going to talk to Martha, Martha Kwiatkowska, trying to pronounce your name right again. Uh, you're from the University of, of uh, Oxford, and you had a very nice keynote uh, regarding also safety when we come to intelligent systems, um, because they are, ar are around us already and will be much exactly. more. Yeah. So do we feel safe? Do we trust the systems or do we have issues there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's the point. Yes, so yes, you've hit it. Uh, uh, we have issues, and uh, if you are following the news, you know, the Tesla Oh yeah, the, the mistake yes, with the self-driving. Yeah. which is now described as overtrust, mm -hmm. and there have been various other incidents. Uh, I mean, of course, uh, you know, self-driving software is here to stay, and uh, you know, it's coming in a, in a big way, and in the long run, it will definitely reduce the uh, number of accidents but uh, we have to understand how trust works uh, how human trust works uh, and this even in in human to human interaction it's it's a difficult topic it is an incredibly difficult topic but in the context of the relationship between a human uh, who wants to delegate a task to an autonomous taxi uh, one aspect that we need to understand is who is responsible, who is accountable if, you know, there is a crash. Yeah. Is it the designer? Uh, you know, is it the uh, brand maker? Or is it the, the hardware, for yeah. example, sensors? And, th and this is this is where it becomes uh, uh, difficult, I guess, because you had a, a, a wonderful example. Would you trust uh, an autonomous taxi to bring your kid to school? And if you do, even would your partner do as well? That's right. So yeah. this is where it becomes because uh, we are now in the phase that we're we're seeing more and more autonomous uh, operating intelligent systems around us. Um, but we also see those mistakes, and they are they are enlarged. They're very big. So will this not be in the way uh, of uh, gaining that trust uh, when we look at the new technologies? I think probably it will be, but we can't stop progress. I think we, we have, you know, progress and Tesla are doing a great job. And I think we have to support it and develop as scientists. I'm very keen and I'm very excited about this project. And I would like to develop, you know, a theory for reasoning about trust and help people to try to you know find accountability yeah so and it's it's the two themes that go hand in hand it's trust and safety because uh, we want to feel safe before exactly. we can start yeah. trusting technology yeah. uh, but are there also some some examples in which we've already adapted uh, technology and we're trusting it right away yeah. uh, yes uh, I mean flying you know uh, airplanes are very he heavily regulated and uh, uh, and this is a very good model for autonomous cars uh, uh, but an autonomous car uh, is driving in a much more difficult situation. That's it, yeah. The, uh, yeah. E uh, flying know. is more safe yeah. than, than the driving. Right, yeah. Yeah, because there are no planes, you know, around you. There is time for pilots to find situational awareness. And, you know, in real traffic with pedestrians, you know, with other cars. Let's say London traffic. That's right, London crazy traffic. Crazy drivers. <laughs> this is the weather. Yeah. Rain, snow, etc. And so this is a very, very difficult problem. Yeah. So maybe uh, it's fair to say that when we're looking at autonomous uh, machinery around us, uh, intelligent systems, that maybe the driving, the autonomous cars, is it's practically the most difficult thing that's going to be autonomous. Uh, and, and, and we're focused on that, obviously, because of the developers and the in innovators around us. But I if we look smaller, it, it's cl more close by than we would think. Uh, 
Yes. So you mean smaller, smaller other types uh, of robots? Yeah, other types yes, of exactly, autonomous exactly. Uh, intelligence you know, systems. Robotic assistants and yes. So I mean, they are now everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and we depend on them, but we also need to build relationships with them. They need to know whether to trust us as well. You know. <laughs> Uh, so uh, it's uh, it's a very exciting topic. Yeah. Mm. So in your prediction, uh, and obviously we don't want to make you a fortune teller, <laughs> but um, what do you think? Uh, how will this um, uh, this will evaluate? Uh, will it be ten years or twenty years before uh, new generations of people are getting more used to um, trusting and and feeling safe with uh, intelligent systems? I. Th I think it will be 10 years or more. Yeah. Uh, I think as they say, if all cars are autonomous, then the problem is easy. <laughs> I think <laughs> it will be very difficult to send autonomous cars in real traffic, you know, when yeah. they have to negotiate with humans, you know, using whatever hand symbols, you know, the, the signals that we are sending to other drivers all the time, and pedestrians as well. So. It's so interesting, and I can only invite people to uh, watch your entire keynote, which we will have uh, available uh, on the our YouTube channel. So if you're liking this uh, content, and uh, don't forget to share it. If you want to see the entire keynote Marta gave uh, here at the Sci Conference, we would like to invite you uh, to check out our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and share this uh, content. And maybe even we uh, have the opportunity to greet you at one of our coming up uh, conferences. Check out our website, please, for uh, upcoming events, and hopefully we'll meet you there soon. Thanks for watching.